short summary video. Uh, this one again is on algebra, and now we're looking at changing the subject and solving equations. Okay, changing the subject is when we want to change, in this case we have c equals a plus 3y. We don't want c equals, we want, the question we've asked us in this case, to change it to be a equals. So we want a all on its own on this side. So I need to get rid of the 3y. Now to do that, the core method we use here is we do the same thing to both sides of the equation. Okay? So we can either add something to both sides, take something away, multiply both sides or divide both sides. We can square roots and so forth, but stick to the four main functions at this foundation level maths we're looking at here today. So, I want to get rid of 3y. If I take away 3y from both sides, 3y take away 3y, gets rid of it, which is exactly what I wanted. Take away 3y from this side, I get a equals c minus 3y. This equation here, I want to make d the subject. So I need to get rid of minus negative 2w. So if I add 2w to that side, and I add 2w to that side, minus 2w plus 2w cancels, which is exactly what I wanted. And I add 2w to this side, and then I have 3a plus 2w on this side. This equation here, I've got f divided by 2 is w. So, I need to get rid of that 2. Now, if I multiply this side by 2, 2 times f divided by 2 cancels. The 2's cancel. 2 divided by 2 cancels, leaving me f on its own. Clever, huh? So, I times this side by 2, so I times this side by 2, and I get f equals 2w. This equation here. Now, what we've seen here is using, doing the same thing to both sides, we can change the subject of an equation. What we're now going to do is use that same method to solve equations. Here, I only have t as the unknown. So, I'm going to do the same thing to both sides to work through and get t all by itself, which will give me the answer. I want to get rid of that minus 3. If I add 3 to both sides, it gets rid of it there and I end up with 10 there. I then divide this side by 2 and this side by 2. 2 times t divided by 2 is just t. 10 divided by 2 is 5. Here, 6y plus 7 is 13. So, I take away 7 from both sides, leaving me 6y equals 6, taking 7 away from that side, 7 away from that side. Now, if I divide this side by 6 and this side by 6, 6 divided by 6 is 1, so I get y equals 1. If I want to check if I'm correct or not, I can substitute my wonderful solution back into my equation. 6 times 1 is 6, plus 7 is 13. Yay! This equation here, r divided by 3 is 9. If I multiply this side by 3, 3 times r divided by 3 is just r. I must multiply this side by 3. So, these cancel, leaving me just r. 3 times 9 is 27. Here, 3 times q is 6. If I divide this side by 3, and I divide this side by 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1. The 3's cancel. 6 divided by 3 is 2. OK, so let's look at a little bit more complicated ones now. Um, let's just drop this out first. So what we're now doing is we're looking at questions where we've got brackets involved as well. 6x plus 2. I get the bracket and I multiply that by that, that by that. So, I'm too short. 5 times x is 5x. Five, 5 times 2 is 10 equals 15. Now, there are other ways of doing this, but I would recommend that the foundation tier GCSE maths, if you get questions like this, just multiply the bracket out. And a lot of the time, uh, uh, higher as well. Um, multiply the bracket out, it'll be easier for you. 
5x plus 10 is 15, solve it in exactly the same way we did on the last page, take away 10 from both sides, so I get 5x equals 5, and then divide both sides by 5 to get x equals 1. Very similar to this one here, multiply brackets, 10 times f is 10f, 10 times minus 6 is minus 60, then I add 60 to both sides to get rid of that, then I divide both sides by 10 to get f equals 8. I can check I'm correct by substituting 8 back into here, 8 minus 6 is 2, 2 multiplied by 10 is 20, yay! Now, this one here, if we had a normal, nice easy x squared equals 9, we could say that x equals 3. We would square root both sides, square root would cancel out squared, square root of 9 would be positive 3 or negative 3, because minus 3 times minus 3 is also 9. But in this case we want x squared to be 11. So 3 times 3 is 9, that's too small. 4 times 4 is 16, that's far too large. Let's just try somewhere in between 3.5 times 3.5. 12.25, still too large. 3.3 times 3.3, ah, that's too small. So each time I'm going higher, lower, higher, lower, I'm getting closer and closer to my magical answer of 11. So 3.3 is too small, 3.4 is too large. So let's try a number dead in between them, 3.35. That's still a little tiny bit too large, so I'll go slightly smaller. Try 3.32 or 3.33, etc. Trying to get as close as I can, so that value in this equation gives me as close as I can to 11. The examiner will say to one or two decimal places. To one decimal place, I will look at these and see which one is the closest. This is 0.11 away, this is 0.56 away. So to one decimal place it's 3.33. To two decimal places I would be looking at my answers 3.35, 3.32, 3.33 to two decimal places and just seeing which one of these was the closest to 11 that I could get. That's all for today. Thank you.